Apple is planning to have their very own electric vehicle in production by 2024. So in the next five years, we may see iCars being driven on the roads. So this is a new report that just came out from some Apple insiders who have been working on Project Titan. And that is the project they created to help develop their very own electric vehicle. So the news of an Apple car is not new. Many years ago, they came out with the idea, but this is the newest report we have where we actually have a key date for production. So these are from Apple insiders that came out. They did not want to be named, but they've seen the plans and they expect Apple to hit production levels in 2024. And this new EV vehicle will have Apple's very own breakthrough battery technology with very long increased range. So they expect this to be a game changer and to be a competitor to some other major tech firms like Google and Amazon who are trying to enter into the EV space. So in this video today, we're going to discuss this news from Apple, go over this headline that they're coming out with their very own EV vehicle by 2024, and go over some other major events for the company. Another positive news for Apple is that they plan to make 30% more iPhones in 2021, which is a great sign because over the past few years, iPhone sales have been declining. So it's nice to see that they're actually increasing production into the next year. And they also have released a new product, their fitness video subscription service, that's going to grow in popularity. With the new stay home economy, people have to work out at home and subscription based models are really growing. They're competing with companies like Peloton and Fitbit in this new fitness space. So overall, they have had some nice headlines as of late, but in today's video, of course, we're going to focus on this new EV vehicle, go over some of the facts that we've heard from these Apple insiders and discuss what this means for other competitors in the EV space, like a Tesla, like a Ford and other traditional automakers as well. We're also going to take a look at Apple as a whole, discuss some future revenue growth rates and what we expect for the company to do over the long term. And we're going to discuss Apple today because it is the largest holding in my personal portfolio as well. I own over $11,000 worth of Apple stock and it is by far my largest holding. I currently own 90 shares and I'm up more than 25% on this company and I continue to buy more even at this current price point. And if you're new to the channel, I am the Gen Z investor and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy and sell and any major market events like we're doing today with this new report of Apple's electric vehicle. So please hit that like button, subscribe for daily videos, and we'll jump right in and discuss this new EV car from Apple. So the actual design and production process for Apple's very own electric vehicle hasn't been going too smoothly. They started Project Titan back in 2014, and that's when they first started to design their very own EV car from scratch. Then over the next few years, we haven't got too much information about how they were doing, but then we got some big headlines back in 2018 when Doug Field, an Apple veteran who had formerly worked at Tesla, returned to oversee the Project Titan. And in 2019, he actually laid off 190 people from the team. So a year after he came back to join Apple and finish this project, he laid off a significant amount of people from Project Titan. So once we got this news event back in 2019, we really thought Apple was kind of out of the EV space. But since that time, they've kind of progressed to build their own consumer vehicle and people who are familiar with the plans, they did not want to have their name shared, believe that Apple has a product that's going to hit the public market over the next few years and compete with some other major EV players. And of course, Apple's main player and their main key point of difference for their EV car is going to be their new battery design that they are creating themselves. And this was here, the adjective used was radically, and this is going to help reduce the cost and increase the vehicle's range, according to another report who's seen Apple's battery design. So the actual company has declined to comment on its future plans, but overall, it's not too shocking. The company itself has announced this Project Titan. We've already heard news that they're trying to enter into this space. So having some of their employees who have actually seen the plans anonymously speak out and share this idea but that by 2024 we may see production isn't really too shocking, and I think that is a viable date. If they said by next year we're going to have cars all over the road, then we know they're being a little bit unrealistic. A four-year timeline to get a vehicle on the road from a company who doesn't have that much experience producing vehicles at any scale, I think is a good amount of time. Of course, the supply chain in creating EV cars is very difficult to actually create and actually have it full-fledged across the world. And of course, it took Elon Musk Tesla 17 years before it actually turned profitable. And if there is one company to do it, it is Apple. They have over $90 billion of cash on their balance sheet right now. So they do have a ton of funds available to them. And this is a cash cow company. So we're actually going to discuss the balance sheet later on when we take a look at Apple as a whole and their overall business growth over the past five years and what we expect down the road. So overall, 
there is some worry that this pandemic may have pushed production back to 2025, but that's really not that big of a deal. We will have to see if this really has put a six to 12 month delay on the project. Some other major features of this EV vehicle that we're hearing here is that they may actually feature multiple LiDAR sensors. And these are the sensors that actually help autonomous vehicles scan different distances. And some of the sensors may come from Apple's internally developed products that are actually in their iPhone and their iPad, or others may be ones that they license or like, you know, acquire from other companies. So this is very interesting. And the one radically different thing about their EV vehicle is going to be the battery. So Apple plans to create their very own unique mono cell design that bulks up the individual cells in a battery and frees up space inside the battery pack by eliminating pouches and modules that hold battery material. So this design means it can actually be more attractive, have more active material and be packed inside the battery in a much more compressed way giving the car potential to actually last longer, have extended range, and be actually cheaper than other EV batteries on the market right now. So we will have to see what's going to happen from this Apple car. We don't know if it's going to be called the Apple car, iCar, or whatever it may be. This is a new project from Apple, and I think they can actually do this. It's very hard to enter the EV space. We're seeing a lot of young companies trying to do just that, but I think Apple, the company with huge amounts of funds, over 90 billion sitting in cash, great research and development team, huge cash cow company bringing in over 50 billion dollars of net income each year i think this is the brand that can get it done and actually achieve what they're planning to do in the ev space so now we're going to move away from the ev car we already discussed the report from the apple insiders gone over the key points and now we're going to take a look at apple company as a whole the share price is up more than 81 percent this year and they currently trade around 128 dollars they are the largest company in the S&P 500 with a $2.15 trillion market cap, and they trade out of Ford PE just under 32. Current dividend yield sits at 0.65%, and overall the company pays $0.82 cents per year in a dividend payment. Some other events I want to point out, of course, is the fact that Apple has increased their production of the iPhones by 30% for 2021, which I think is a very good sign. Apple iPhones are still the largest revenue generating product in the Apple ecosystem and the fact that they're increasing production only means that this newest slate of iPhones has seen growing demand. Of course, I also mentioned earlier that the fitness subscription model I think is a really nice addition to the company's portfolio. Services are really help driving Apple's bottom line and that's a really strong growth factor for the business. And Apple services now make up more than 20% of their revenue and they are the fastest revenue generating growth product for Apple ecosystem. If we take a look now at how Apple's revenue is broken down. So you can see the share of revenue to a total of 100%. Back in 2012, the iPhone made up 51% of total revenue. And what I want to point out is services at the very bottom made up 6.5%. If we compare that now to the latest quarter, for Q4 of 2020, the iPhone only makes up 40% of total revenue and services now make up 22.5%. That's an absolutely incredible transition away from one core product. Back when Apple's iPhone made up a majority of their sales and their revenue, that was somewhat worrisome because everyone knows at some point, the iPhone would slowly start to decline in growth rate. But now they have a services, which is a very high profitable part of their business, making up around one fifth plus of the total revenue. That's absolutely incredible. And now that they continue to grow those services year over year, coming in with new products, new models, new subscription services, I think services will continue to grow. And I think that actually has the potential to hit 30 to 40% of their total revenue over the next decade if they continue to innovate. Now, if we take a look at Apple as a whole for the company, they're rated as a buy. We have 40 different analysts surveyed, 11 strong buys, 19 buys, eight holds, and even one sell and one strong sell. I don't really understand the point of selling out of Apple. I do understand they are on a massive run up. Share price is up 80% on the 12 month chart, which is insane. So it is nice to lock in profits, but I only like selling out of companies personally when I think the growth is done. I sell out of companies where I don't believe they will continue to grow their top line each year down the road. And when they're starting to contract rather than expand. But I don't think Apple's anywhere near that. Not even close. They just unre unreeled the new iPhones that I think are growing in popularity. Like I mentioned, services are growing. I don't think now is the time to sell to Apple whatsoever. If we take a look at their earnings over the past six quarters, they've beaten expectation each and every time in the upward and positive way. And over the past few quarters, you have seen they actually crushed some expectations, beating by 26 and 13%. 
and annual revenue over the next two years are expected to grow significantly. This company already brings in close to $300 billion of annual revenue. And in 2021, we're expecting 15% forecasted top line growth. And in 2022, we're expecting 21% annual revenue growth from the largest company in the world. That's absolutely unthinkable to even imagine that a company of this size can still grow their top line at such a fast rate. And if we take a look at their earnings per share numbers, we're still expecting some nice year over year growth. Uh, over 11% year over growth over the next quarter, followed by 37%, 18 and 26% growth in EPS over the next year. So again, earnings per share estimates are still expected to grow by a nice amount quarter over quarter. Now, if we take a look at their actual income statement, Apple has some of the best financials on the market. Revenue has been continuing to grow year over year over the long term. And in the past 12 months, they've generated $274 billion of total revenue. And if we compare that to their bottom line net income, another factor that continues to grow year over year, $57 billion of net income from Apple over the past 12 months, which is absolutely incredible to even think about. This company generates around $5 billion of net income per month. Insane numbers from this company. Now, if we take a look at their balance sheet, you can see they have total cash and investments of over $90 billion. Right now, their cash position that will allow them to make acquisitions, improve research and development, build production facilities, whatever it may be, is at over close to $91 billion, which is absolutely incredible. Overall, they have total current assets of $143 billion. Compare that to their total current liabilities of 105, a nice current ratio sitting around a 1.3 right now. So again, no worry about their short-term financial position. They have total assets of 323 billion compared to total liabilities of 258 billion. So another strong overall ratio. Total equity in the business has been slightly declining. That isn't the best sign, but overall from Apple, I'm not too worried about the business at all over the long term. Now, if we take a look at this report regarding the dividend. Very low starting yield at 0.65%, but of course with a company that has grown their share price 80% this year, this dividend is just an added bonus. The payout ratio is only 20% of their net income, and this company also does a ton of share buybacks. So they do dividend payment that is somewhat small to start out with, but the dividend grows at over 10% per year, which is a beautiful compound rate. And they also do a ton of share buybacks, so they return capital to investors in two forms, and overall they've been growing their dividend for nine consecutive years. So Apple as a whole is one of the strongest companies in the world. They are the largest by mark cap with a $2.15 trillion value right now. And overall, this is a business with extremely strong brand loyalty. The fact that Apple products exist, exist everywhere, that people, once they have an iPhone, they really don't want to switch out of that Apple ecosystem, and the fact that they have such a nice integrated system where everything and all their products work seamlessly together. Your AirPods match with your phone, which matches with your watch, which is also hooked up to your Mac laptop, is so flawless and incredible. And the fact that they're entering into the streaming services with Apple TV, they have all their different subscription-based models such as Apple Music, the new fitness model, and many more. I just think the company as a whole is so well-rounded, dominates in almost every factor they enter into, that this new EV car is only going to be an added bonus. Whether or not they actually do production themselves, whether they outsource production, or whether they just license their technology into another electric vehicle manufacturer's design, I think Apple as a whole is going to dominate the EV space like they do with everything else. I think their brand loyalty is going to be insane, and I think if they can hit a nice innovative vehicle on the road in the next five years, I think they can actually gain some market share. No way do I believe they will become a market leader. They're not going to become an electric vehicle company, but I think it will make up a decent part of their revenue if they can hit it at scale. So thank you for watching, everyone. Those are my thoughts on Apple, the company as a whole. We saw some future predictions for the growth. And overall, I think Apple, Apple will continue to be one of the largest companies in the world. I think they're going to continue to see double-digit growth over the long term. And I plan to hold this company for at least the next decade without even thinking about selling anytime soon. So thank you for watching. I'm the Gen Z Investor, and see you in tomorrow's video.